afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the recap. I'm Laz. Let's jump right into it. Uh, take you right into the, the technicals. What a day we had. Uh, big, big, big up day, followed by uh, a big reversal day. Uh, I guess it was Monday, the day before uh, New Year's. So closing the year very uh, on a positive note and, and entering 2013 on an even more positive note. Uh, definitely a tough trade, tough trade because hard to see this coming, hard to see the market snapping back from, you know, down here, it's at, at 140 spy to, you know, 146 in a matter of, you know, a session and an overnight. So, um, you know, definitely a tough trade to get involved with at this point. I know a lot of traders, uh, you know, kind of frustrated today, I think was the general theme because it just wasn't a tradable type of move. It really, most of this happened on a very low volume day. Uh, a New Year's Eve session followed by a big gap up uh, session this morning and, and, you know, a little bit of follow through late, late, late in the day today. Um, but, but I think a lot of traders just, you know, finding this move a little bit difficult because uh, very untradeable, tough to position yourself into this type of uh, a trade. Um, so it is what it is and, and, and we'll, we'll chalk it up. And, and I think now the, the mentality here has to be, you know, um, like I said in the midday update, this is a, a dangerous place to be long. You don't want to be chasing price. Um, you, you just don't want to be chasing price in general, whether it's to the upside or the downside. Uh, I think it's just not smart money. You still have a flat 21 EMA down here. Um, even though we did see a new price spike high today, uh, I still would be very, very careful about chasing anything. At this point, I think it's day trade only. Uh, in my honest opinion, and that's you know my own personal game plan. That's what I'm going to be looking for uh, in the days uh, coming. It's just cash flow day trade uh, type of setups. No real you know opinions about higher or lower. I am keeping an eye on this you know what what I perceive to be this rising trend line uh, retesting up here. You can see snapping back, uh, making a new high. Very very challenging trade um, overall. So I think you know the, the the coming days will be very very telling. If you are a permable, be very careful about, you know, like I said, being being overly aggressive up here. It doesn't mean you can't make money, doesn't mean we can't go higher, but I'd wait for an appropriate good consolidation, a multi-day, even a week or two of some consolidation here before, you know, any real long money comes into play. You have this big ominous gap up from this morning, um, as well as uh, this gap down from over here. So there's a, basically what I call a, um, a pocket of air you know, you have this whole area right here that really hasn't been traded. We haven't seen a trade happen in that level. And I suspect, you know, we might, you know, see a drawdown or some short term pullback uh, into this on this daily time frame into these averages before, you know, fresh money gets put to work here. At least that's the way I would look to trade this uh, this market right here right now based on uh, what I see. The banks, I think the banks did their job of keeping the market, you know, relatively intact. Uh, here's Goldman Sachs broke out uh, of this pattern, this consolidation today on this gap up. Again, I, I, I hate just I hate, you know, buying gap ups like this. Uh, I always prefer to get this on the breakout or, or wait for a pullback. That's just the unfortunate reality of, 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 you know, being an active trader is that as much as this is a bullish looking chart, not a great trade to really get involved with uh, unless you are buying in this consolidation pattern. But banks. Nevertheless, uh, still maintain a very bullish structure here. Citigroup, uh, again, just like Goldman, breaking out today to new uh, swing highs off of this multi-day con multi consolidation. Definitely showed some good relative strength uh, over the last week and week and a half, two weeks, while the market kind of pushed a little bit lower uh, and today, you know, breaking breaking higher. So keep an eye on the banks as they seem to me um, relatively strong in keeping this market intact. Uh, the apples of the world, a little bit more of a mixed bag. Uh, you know, Apple's had a huge haircut in price from 700 to 500, snapping back. And I suspect over the next couple of sessions, this again will get very, very choppy. I mean, you might see again a little bit of a drawdown in price. You could see a little bit higher. You know, you could really make the argument for both ways right now, which is why I'd be maybe a little more hands off. You'd like to see a bull flag develop here. That would be, you know, a nice multi day, you know, consolidation pattern. Um, let, let this 8 and 21 start to turn up. Let this pattern start to change a little bit. And again, I think that that's going to occur with time uh, more so than anything else. So be patient as you approach uh, this trading day. Don't get yourself wound up about one big up day. One, one up day, one down day does not make a market. Uh, I think if we go back to the S&Ps, if I'm not 
if I remember correctly, I'm going back in time, January 1st, 2012, uh, on this day last year, uh, somewhere over here, you can see we had a large gap up. SPIs closed uh, 125 half on New Year's Eve and opened up at 120, close to 128. So uh, a big gap up to start off last year, which kicked off, you know, a little bit of a rally uh, early, you know, January, February last year. We're very, very bullish for the market. And then you can see we went into this very multi-month chop, uh, choppy type of environment. And you can see, you know, how that played out. So most of the gains uh, for 2012 coming early in the year, uh, we did finish the year, you know, relatively strong, but again, very ominous of, of last year, big gap up. But uh, at this time, I, I still think, uh, you know, you got to look at this risk on, you know, where is risk the, the greatest? And you have a whole lot of resistance up in this zone. You can see back in September, October, uh, this is really where the market sort of topped out. We're back and testing those levels, but I think to enter and, and put new money to work here, like I said, is, is going to be a higher risk, much higher risk uh, type of trade. Uh, as far as some other stocks that I know are on the board, a lot of traders looking at Google, really a lackluster session in my opinion, gapping up uh, with the market, but not really trading anywhere substantial, not really seeing any enthusiasm in that trade, but still looks, you know, still looks decent to the long side, still, uh, you know, buyers buying pullbacks here. So we'll keep an eye on that one uh, as the days, as the days progress. Um, Netflix. Uh, gapping up and selling off a little bit, but no real damage done one way or the other here. Technically, um, looks to me like, you know, this stock still has a good structure. So long as it stays above roughly the 88 half area, uh, Amazon becoming a little bit more choppy in here. You can see the big volatile swings from 265 to 245 back to 260, a lot of volatility in here. So if you're going to trade this, remember to trade this with you know, more of a shorter term mentality, I think at this point, uh, definitely having trouble with this upper level, 260, 265, but I think needs more time and more time, you'll probably have more conclusive data. LinkedIn, another one that's been off the radar for a little while, seeing some early morning selling. Uh, LinkedIn to me, potential bearish pattern building in here. You can see a little bit of a head and shoulders uh, with this neckline over here. This potentially could be the uh, top of a right shoulder. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one for lower prices. It might start to work its way down here. Uh, but again, in time, we'll have a little bit more data to support that. You can see a left shoulder here. You can see what looks to be the top of a head here. Um, and if I kind of tighten this up, you can see it maybe a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, uh, that trade uh, as well. So um, right now it's a, you know, it, it is a, uh, it's an interesting tape, a lot of volatility, volatility caused by some of the noise in Washington. Uh, you know, interpret it as you feel best fits your own risk, you know, tolerances, your risk profile. Uh, as I watched the market today uh, on the first trading day of the new year, you know, we saw a lot of, I personally saw a lot of, uh, a lot of indecision in the first couple of hours. You saw some stocks, you know, kind of fade off this big gap and then base. And then, you know, later in the day, if we look at the, uh, you look at the market intraday here, uh, you'll see the price action as it was really sort of muted for the better part of the day. You know, the big gap up and very, you know, very subtle pullback. Spent most of 11 o'clock to 3, 3.30, you know, really doing nothing. And then late in the day, you saw that big surge. So uh, we'll see how this plays out over uh, the next day or two. Um, I do anticipate, you know, a pullback in the cards, possibly within the next, you know, day to day and a half. Uh, and, I, and I think that that would be good for even for the bulls to look to buy a pullback. You don't want to chase highs. That's just not how, you know, people make money in this business by and large. You, you make money on the bullish side by, by buying pullbacks. So, you know, wait for that structure, wait for that low risk setup. Don't, don't get, you know, caught impulsing your way into this market as tempting as it might be because you see, you know, the Dow up 300 or, or big numbers on the screen. Just again, that's how you, you, you take on a lot of risk. That's my honest opinion. I've made a career uh, as a trader by trying to mitigate and understand that, you know, you don't chase price. Um, so I, 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 I preach it, I live it. Um, and I think it's good, you know, just good words of advice. Um, you know, for every one time you, you make money chasing a stock up or chasing a market up, there's going to be three or four other times that, you know, that chase just, you know, uh, kind of doesn't really work out the way, the way you would have liked. So that's my two cents. Again, tune into the VTF. I still think day trading, short-term trading, uh, the smaller time frames are probably where 
Uh, people are going to thrive right now with this volatility. Uh, but nevertheless, a planned trader is a profitable trader. Have a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.